All right, uh, Shalom, Kahalayim La, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakaha Kodash, double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone, Rule T12. Must peace, love, and salutation to the brothers doing his work in truth and sincerity. Shalom, Shalom. Uh, this is the brother Batat back again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, it'd be edifying. Um, I don't really have a specific topic for this lesson. You know, I'm going to just go flow through the spirit. I don't really have a topic, so I'm going to just flow through the spirit. You know, whatever the Lord put in my spirit to bring out, I'm going to bring it out a little willing. And it'll be edifying. Um, today is December 13th, 2023. We almost at the end of America. Oh, it's like, yeah, America. Um, we almost also at the end of the year. It's about to be, uh, according to Esau, it's about to be, you know, so-called January, the beginning of the new year. And uh, Passover is approaching, you know, um, and patiently waiting on what. The, this year, next year is going to be deemed by the Apostle Tar. Um, this year was the hopeful year that all the prophecies come to pass, you know, and we're still hoping the same thing. It, that same energy is going to flow into the next year of hoping, you know, hastening the day that Yahweh Shai returns and and put a, puts an end to America and all its bullshit, you know, because, you know, this place is uh, grievous to our, you know, um, our souls, is grievous to our life, is grievous to our very existence, you know, um, we're subject to payments, you know, everything from the top to the bottom of this place is a vexation to the spirit, you know, and uh, of, to the righteous. The scripture says the, the souls of the just complain continually. Um, wh wh Where is that? Uh, um, complain continually. Huh. Let's see. Here it is. Uh, fifth, uh, second edge is chapter 15. You know what? Let's start at one. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. And that's what we do every week in, week out when we do these lessons. We're speaking the prophecies of the Bible, you know, that was written thousands of years ago, you know, that are going to happen in the times that we're living in now. And, we're, and they're happening. You know, it's if you have eyes to see it, that these things are happening in the earth as we speak. You know, it says, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. So these words that we speak are not our own words. These are the words of Yahweh Bashmel Shah. And the true prophets are going to speak the true word of the Heavenly Father. They're not going to be speak, teaching lies and, and deceit. Ah, bear with me. Uh, verse two, it says, and cause them to written to be written in paper for they are faithful and true because these words that was written in paper thousands of years ago in the scrolls are faithful and true. You know, and because that we we have evidence that these things in the past have happened. You know, the scripture says what uh, Romans, the things that are written for time were written for our learning. We learn that what the scriptures is real. You know, Esau knows that the Bible is real. Esau knows that uh, David and Goliath was real, that King Solomon was a, a real person, that um, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, was a, a real man that walked this earth 2,000 years ago. Esau knows about the history of the world. He knows world history, man, secular history. He knows that these things in the Bible that are written are true. And the same thing applies for today. That's why he wants Jake to be disconnected from the heavenly father so we don't proclaim this word in the last days but esau wasn't counting on the lord uh, actually raising up the elect but he did anyways in spite of all the efforts that esau tried to disconnect us from our power the lord still raised up his elect verse 3 says fear not their imagination against thee because we don't you know the lord told us not to fear what these people they imagine to do to us they desire to do us like like yahweh Shah told peter uh, I have, uh, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat because Esau ultimately wants to get rid of us. Project Megiddo, you got red list, blue, uh, red list, uh, I think it's a blue list too. You know, these devils, they want to kill us, they want to kill us on sight, but you know, they can't just roll on us because that'll look unjust in their eyes, you know. And the Lord ain't gonna allow them to do that, you know, they just they can't just roll on us like that, you know. Because uh, Esau might be subject to rebellions and things of that nature, you know, if he just try to roll on us. So he got to make an excuse. He got to make a reason. He got to make it. Um, he got to justify himself before he roll on us, man. You know, and ultimately he's scared that the heavenly father is going to do something because he's going to do something. The Lord is going to intervene. There is going to be divine intervention, you know, in these last days when the heavenly father really opens up and start. When Esau makes his move, the Heavenly Father is going to make his move. And we don't know exactly what that is, man. It might be brothers getting spiritual powers. Might the Lord send the um, Michael the Archangel. You never know, man. You know? But 
But as soon as the Heavenly Father, as soon as Esau make his move, the Lord is going to make his move. And we cannot wait um, for the Lord to uh, start to bring in America down, which he's bringing it down now. You know, he's bringing it down little by little, like, you know, the Lord brought down the Canaanites. He's bringing it down little by little. But, you know, we're just hastening the day because we want we ready to get up out of here, you know, but we got to be long suffering and be patient and wait for the Heavenly Father to fin work his work. man. He's going to work. He's going to do it, man. You know, so let's continue on. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee, because there's going to be a lot of people that don't believe what we believe. There's going to be a lot of people that have something to say about what we believe or they're not going to they don't agree with it. It's too it's too vulgar. It's too blah, 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 you know. It doesn't fit their liking. It doesn't, you know, tickle their ears. Fuck them. You know, don't we don't care about that, man. We're here to give you the message. If you hear it, you hear it. You're beautiful. Great. Call me Asherala. But if you don't, oh, well, man, you know, if you don't want to listen to the word, you don't want to listen to your how about Shah, you're not you're not you're not hurting nobody but yourself, because ultimately this word is for you. Uh, incredulity, incredulity. It says disbelieving frame of mind. Boom. That's all that needs to be said. Unbelief. Unbelief. So a lot of our people have that mentality and they've had that mentality for a long time. Even when Yahweh Shai was on the scene, they didn't believe on him. You know, he they, he was rejected by his own people. So these niggas ain't going to listen, man. You know, and a hey, call me to those dudes, Shalom to those that do. But to those that don't, hey, man, the Lord's going to do deal with you. You got to you got to pay for your own sins, man. It says, um. Verse four, it says, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, period, man. That, that, there's no, there's, that's clear cut and to the point, man. If you unfaithful you, to your how about Shemel Shah, you're going to die in that unfaithfulness, man. And it's as simple as that. Um, damn, it's a scripture that I went into that. I went into the BBE and it was hit and it said something about faith. Um, uh, I'm not sure what that scripture is. Um. This is Second Ezra chapter fifteen, verse five. It says, "Behold," said Yahweh, "said yeah." I says, "I will bring plagues upon the world: the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For this, for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled." So the heavenly Father is bringing plagues upon the earth slowly but surely. That's why it's judgment going out every day, you know. But there's gonna come a time where it's gonna be known that there. This is this is the heavenly Father's doing. That the Lord is really unleashing out here. You know, he's going to, he's very soon, he's going to unleash. And a lot of people are going to realize that, oh my God, this is the wrath of the Almighty right here. But then it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late for mercy then. You better get it, get it while the getting is good. Because once that time comes and goes, it ain't nothing much, it ain't nothing much to, more to be said because the prophets ain't going to be nowhere to be found. There's going to be straight judgment out here, man. Um, second edge is 15 and, um, damn, I'm trying to think of that scripture that I brought out. It was in the BBE at camp Sunday. It says something about faith. Um, but, um, I'm not trying to get too tied up in that. Lord will not remember the scripture, but I can't remember the scripture. Um, second edge chapter 15, verse seven. No, I'm going to start at verse eight. It says, for the wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And who, who can we think for that? Esau, Edom, and his philosophy and way of life, you know, against the law, statute, commandments of the Bible. That's how wickedness has polluted the earth. And they're the children of wickedness. They're the seed of wickedness, man. So wherever they go, wickedness follows them. Um, and transgression increases. Transgression increases. This is our Proverbs 29 and 16. It says, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. And what do we see? The wicked being multiplied in the earth. That's why so much wickedness going on. And the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, going to have to send his son, Yahweh Shai, back to restore everything back to where it's supposed to be. Uh, second Edges 13, I mean, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Second Edges 15 and um. Verse 6, for the wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth due to Esau, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. For thus 
Therefore, thus said Yahweh, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. So the Lord is not going to hold back his judgment anymore. He's going to bring it. He's going to bring it forth. He's going to execute judgment, man. The Lord ain't going to keep dealing with this place, man. It's going to it's going to be a specific time when the heavenly father is going to unleash everything upon America. It says. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, neither which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. You know, you got brothers in the spirit world that, you know, may have passed on. Um, they're complaining to the heavenly father. Like it says in Revelations, the souls uh, that was beheaded, well, well, those souls that was um, crying about the injustice of the earth that died in the faith. You got brothers on that's don't passed on that's complaining to the Lord. And you got brothers, you know, that are on the earth complaining to the heavenly father, you know, for for the to bring Esau down. Verse nine says, and therefore and therefore said Yahweh, I will surely avenge them. Uh, Luke the uh, 18th chapter and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So Luke the 18th chapter is going to happen. The Lord is going to avenge. The elect. Let me um. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. You know, since I quoted it. You know, hold fast. Luke eighteen and one it says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men are always to pray and not to faint, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not the Most High, neither regarded man, and there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But after a while, afterward, he he said within himself, Though I fear not the Most High, no regard men, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And, Yah, and the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. And this is the words of Yahweh Shai. This, that's written in red. It says, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So the, Yahweh Shai is telling you that the Heavenly Father is going to uh, avenge the elect speedily, man. Quickly. You know, quickly. Without notice, man. The heavenly father is going to avenge the elect, man, because because those men, the elect, those elect men, whoever they are, those men have suffered greatly by the hands of their enemies in Israel and, and amongst other nations. Second address of chapter 15, uh, verse nine, it says, and therefore said Yahweh, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them, because what the scripture says, vengeance belongeth to me. Uh, This is uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 35. It says, To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. So what's, what's going to come upon Esau and you know, two-thirds of, of the nation of Israel that refuse to hear the, the Heavenly Father? Ven uh, vengeance from the Heavenly Father. When you, when you find yourself at the end, at the wrong barrel, at the end of a barrel of a gun, just know that that's the judgment of Yahweh Bashim I'm shot for you. A lot of people are gonna die, man. You know, uh Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse uh 34, 5 again. It says, I will take vent revenge, I will take revenge. I will pay them back in due time for in due time their fit, foot feet will slip, their day of disaster will arrive, and their destiny will overtake them. So the heavenly father Yahweh is going to execute vengeance and that's who we depend on to avenge of our enemies because we can't avenge ourselves the scripture says that he that revenges himself find vengeance from the lord you know so we can't do it ourselves let me get that precept hold on let me see, uh, let me see uh, it's in the pocket for it's in the pocket for here is a uh, 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 Sirach 38, Meslachia, Sirach 28 and 1. He that revengeth 
shall find vengeance from Yahweh, and he will surely keep his sin and remember. So we got to let the Lord do his do work, his work, man. Get vengeance for us, man. We can't revenge. We can't get revenge on ourselves. We try to take we try to take Esau down ourselves. That's going to be a futile attempt. And it's going to be you're going to fail that mission man, because Esau going to stomp your ass. So we got to depend on Yahweh Bashem Shah. Second Edges chapter 15, verse 10, it says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. A flock of what? A flock of sheep. And now when you look up the word sheep in the online the etymology dictionary, it tells you, um, let's see, I got to find it. Uh, let, give me one second. Okay, it says, it says one of the one of the animals most useful to humans. Let me see. Uh, uh, gotta skim through this real quick. Okay. Um, it says it has been used from the old English times as a type of timidly and figuratively of those under the guidance of the Most High. The meaning, stupid, timid person. I thought the word docile was in there because uh, people are being led like a flock of sheep. A um, sheep is some uh, animal that's docile. Uh, I thought the word docile was in there somewhere. I might be overlooking it. Well. Esau must have changed it. I don't look in here before. I looked up the word sheep before. And it had the word docile in there. Because it explains. It explains how a sheep is. That's why a sheep needs a, a shepherd. Because it's docile. It needs guidance. And our people. They need guidance. But their heavenly father. Offered them guidance. But they don't want to take it. They don't accept the guidance that the Heavenly Father has um is giving them. Um, okay, basically, a sheep is an animal that needs to be that needs to be that needs guidance, needs protection, if you will. Sheep are uh, <laughs> very docile. I could have sworn. Forgive me. I I know I've I've looked up this word before, and it had the word docile in there as it pertaining to people. It 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 had the word docile. Here it is. Okay, sheepish. Okay, it says sheepish of pertaining to or resembling a sheep, in some perceived characteristic from sheepish. Originally meek, modest, docile. Here you go, docile. That's the word I'm looking for. Simple. Hey, there, here's another, um, it says with suggestions of easy to deceive. Easy to deceive. Well, you see it right there. I'm trying to, there it is. Easy to deceive. That's how our people are. So it's the word sheepish. Okay. Okay. It's not sheep. It's sheepish. For some reason, it's, it's in sheepish and not sheep. Okay. So that's how people are. They're they're docile. When you look at the word docile, let's look it up. It says easy talk, quick to learn, easy talk to show what easy talk and what the way of America make to appear right. That's what Esau do. He make to see. He make it seem like his way of life is right, and the the way of the scriptures is wrong. So somebody they have been easily taught uh, the way of sin, and they're submissive to it. Oh, submissive. Oh, the word submissive. Hey, they're going to wear submissive. Obedient. To, obedient to what? Esau. You know, easily managed by who? Esau. You know? So they're docile in the wrong sense. They need to be docile for Yahweh Bashem Shah. You know? But they're docile for Esau. Eat them. This is our second Edges chapter 15, verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. They, they're like sheep going to the slaughter, man. That's how Esau is leading them. 
because he wants them to continue in his ways in his thoughts and in his way of life in his bullshit you know and that's going to lead you to your grave because the heavenly father wants you to seek him not esau The Heavenly Father wants you to indulge in his ways, which are the laws, statutes, commandments. That's what, you, what you, Jake's supposed to be doing. You don't supposed to be following after Esau. You're supposed to be following the Lord. But you won't, you won't return to the Lord, so therefore, you're going to be put to death. It says, my behold, verse 10 says, behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, which Egypt means bondage, represents bondage, because we're um, going back to... The first captivity of Jacob, uh, the first major captivity of Jacob in the land of Egypt. Verse 11 says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm, which is what? A great deliverance. And they smite Egypt with plagues, which ultimate plague is going to be the therm thermonuclear missiles, you know, nuclear destruction. As before and would destroy all the land thereof. So the word, the plagues that the Most High is going to smite America, which is the new Egypt with, is... um nuclear destruction this is uh, malachi 4 1 this is a milk scripture for behold the days come that shall burn as an oven that means going to be very hot and all the proud yea and all that do wickedly shall be stubble this ain't talking about global warming you hear me this ain't talking about no global warming none of that bullshit this is talking about pure heat coming from nuclear missiles and the day that cometh shall burn them up said yahweh of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch so esau eat them once America Falls ain't going to be no re no revamp or no renaissance. You know, there's not going to be no more renaissance, man. No more rebirth. You know, you're going into slavery. So we're patiently hastening the day that Yahweh Bashim Shai returns to establish righteous order in the earth. And that's exactly what he's going to do. But before anything... Before that, Esau has to be destroyed. He has to be taken out of the way. You know, he has to be taken down. And the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is going to send his son, Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is going to triumph. He's going to take Esau down vigorously. This is the book of Revelations 19. Verse 11, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. That's, uh, horse represents power. Uh, pure, white represents purity. Pure power, because when Yahweh Shah returns, he's returning with pure power, and he's returning on a so-called UFO. That's where that power is going to lie at, man. You know? Because ultimately, you know, all throughout the scriptures tell you he's going to return with clouds. Revelation 1 and 7, uh, 2nd Edges 13. Yahweh Shai, who is this that coming from Edom with diagrams from Basra? Yahweh Shai is going to return. He's returning in a chariot, a so-called UFO, which those things are pure power, man. You know, pure righteous power. And they're going to actually shoot laser beams and destroy Esau's and Esau and his armies. It says, in he that... And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. It ain't going to be no horses running in the sky, man. You know, it's symbolic for something. It says, and in righteousness, he does judge and make war. That's what Yahweh Shai is coming to do, man. I cannot send peace. Send peace. Oh, wait, let me get a sword. Let me see. Uh, Matthew 10 and 34. Let's, get in. Let's NLT that and BBE that. Matthew uh, 10 and 34. Matthew 10 and 34. You know, you know, well, you know, let's read the KJV then NLT. It says, and Yahweh Shai said unto them, how many, hold on. What, 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 what the hell? It's like it, bear with me. I thought I pressed, I thought I pressed 10. Okay. Uh, this is Matthew 10 and 34. Flock here. It says, Think not that I'm come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So let's read the NLT. It says, Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. Because he didn't. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. So when he returns, he's coming to bring war. It says, do, The BBE says, Do not think, do not have the thought 
that I come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So it's pretty much says the same thing. Um, so that's exactly what Yahweh is bringing, man. He's bringing judgment. And then he is going to establish his kingdom, which is going to be an era of peace. You know, Revelation chapter 19. Uh, verse 12 says his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns because what? He's coming to conquer. He's coming to take your place, man. That's symbolic. For all the conquering that he's coming to do. You know, it says, and he that had a name, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself, but he himself. And he was clothed with a vexture dipped in blood. And his name was called the word of the most high, the word of God. You know, which that's symbolic because the high is going to kill a lot of people that vexture dipped in blood, man. The scripture says he's going to shed a lot of blood. Verse 14, who is the dead coming from Edom with die coming from Basra? What do you think that means? Bloodshed, man. It's symbolic for all the people he's going to kill. It says, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. So are you going to see white horses in the heavens? No. You're going to see chariots, UFOs in the heavens, man. The angel, Yahweh Shai coming and the angels is following him, man. Coming to wage war against Esau in this, in this world. It says, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. What is that talking about? The the uh the laser beams from the chariots, man. That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty, because what that that those UFOs are gonna be equipped with concentrated laser beams of fire, and that's exactly what's gonna tear Esau and those armies apart. It's going to completely destroy him, man. You see, uh, hmm, I never looked up that word, sharp sword. You see, uh, the word sharp. It says probably a skin to the basis of acid. Hmm. So it says sharp, swift, quick. Because ultimately, the Lord is going to take out Esau quickly, swiftly. Scripture says it. Esau is going to, uh, the Lord is going to, Yahweh is going to make an end to Esau quickly. Let's see what the BBE says. BBE says, and out of his mouth comes a sharp sword. With which he overcomes the nations, and he has rule over them with the rod, with a rod of iron, and he is crushing with his feet the grapes of the strong wrath of the Most High, the ruler of all, which is symbolic because of the, uh, the judgment that he's going to do when he returns. Man. So we are waiting for this day. <laughs> We're ready for this day, Lord willing, man. To see how we shall return and put it in the Esau. Let's close it out with this. Revelations 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and with and every eye shall see him, and all they which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so among. This is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He is gonna return and put it into Esau and establish a righteous kingdom on the earth, and it's gonna be peace forever, and other heathens are going into slavery. So with that. Lord willing, this quick lesson flowing in spirit was less with edifying. I'm close out by giving all praises and glory to Yahweh by Shimel Shabbat Shimon Kakuda Shalom.